Welcome back. Today we are going to go over how to set up this thrust attack. So you can attack projectiles and interact with objects in our scene. So let's jump right into it. The first thing we're going to need to do is set up some Unity side stuff. So I went to my player. I went ahead and added a empty game object called attack point at the end of my spear. This will represent where our attack will emanate from. The next step is to set up your animations. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to click create new clip and name it mushroom attack. Then I'm going to hit this little record button, move my timeline, that's this bar up here, to some point in time, and then move my spear to where I want it to be. So in my case, I rotated my arm and pushed it forward a little bit and then stuck my spear out till I got a move that looks like a good attack to me. Then what you're going to want to do is at the very end, you're going to want to copy that keyframe and paste it again. You can do that by highlighting Control C and Control V. The reason why we're doing this is to give some extra emphasis to the spear thrust. So it lingers at full extension for a little bit, so it catches the player's eye. This is a method of giving some more impact to an attack. After we do that, we need to set it up in the Animate Tour. So we're going to go to our Animate Tour component, and then we are going to make sure that we have two layers. I have one layer here for movement, so this handles all my walking, jumping, running, all of that. Then I have a different layer for actions. This is the layer that we need to set up. So the way we do this, the first step is we're going to right click, create state, and select empty. Then we're going to right click on that and set it as a layer default state. This is going to be a state with no data, so it does nothing. It doesn't make our player animate, it doesn't make them not animate. This is what our player will be doing by default. Then we are going to drag our mushroom attack from our animations folder or wherever you saved it to our panel here. And you can see that we have two transitions to make. We need to make a transition from any state to mushroom attack and from mushroom attack to exit. The transition from any state to mushroom attack has these settings. I unchecked exit time. I set my duration to 0.25 this will add a little bit of a blend between the animation and I left all the other settings as default the other way I enabled has exit time and I set my exit time to 1 with the transition duration of 0 so what's happening here is this entire animation my entire attack has to play before I stop doing that animation the reason that we have two layers is so that our legs and our movement can be controlled and played at the same time as our attacking animation. That way we can attack while moving. After we have this set up, we are going to go to our scripts folder and following the single purpose principle, we're going to make a new script for our thrust attack. Once that script loads, we're going to need to put in some variables right away. We're going to need a serialized field, private float damage, one for range, one for our attack point, which is that point that we made, and then a layer mask of the enemies we want to be able to hit. All these are private, all of them are serialized. Then we are going to add this function down at the bottom. This is a public void on draw gizmos. There's a variant of this function called on draw gizmos selected. Both work, it's completely up to you which you want to use. What this does is allows this range indicator to be shown in our scene view. It just draws a circle with a certain radius. I'm using this to signify what can be affected by my attack. So when my attack is triggered, anything within the circle will take damage. You specify the color first, and then you specify what you want to draw. In my case, I want to draw a wire sphere. I'm giving it the origin point of our attack and the range as our radius. Next, we write our attack function. So this function is a custom function that we will be calling in our animation in a second. First, let's go through this function. We create an array of collider 2Ds called enemies to hit, and this is assigned by using physics 2D overlap circle all. We give it a attack point position, the size of our circle, and a layer mask for what we can interact with. The way this works is we essentially draw a circle from our attack point and anything within the circle that has a collider 2D component gets added to our array. The enemies can hit 
layer mask allows us to ignore things that are on a specific layer. For example, I want to interact with my braziers. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this braziers prefab up and I'm gonna add a new layer to my layers. You can find the layers over here in the inspector up at the top right. Click add layer and I'm gonna type in enemy in one of our empty spaces. Then I'm gonna make sure to select my brazier and put it on the enemy layer. I also wanna do this for anything else I want to interact with. In my case, the spit, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. What we can do is specify that we only want to collide with things on the enemy layer or whatever layers you want. An example of this is on this script. You can see how I have a drop down here under enemies can hit. This is the layer mask and I can just check mark the single layer I want to interact with. This is an easy way to be efficient so you don't even bother trying to check things like the ground or the wall or the, the background or what have you. So after we have this array of all the things that we have potentially hit, then we need to use a for each loop that looks at each individual collider in our array and detects if they have a component and does damage to, to them. The setup I have here is using interfaces, which I'll link in the top right, but you can do anything here. I have many times in the past directly accessed enemy.getComponentHealth and just did damage to it, accessing a take damage function. This method is a little bit cleaner because I can do two separate things at once. So this interface I can be hit is something that both my brazier has and my projectile has. But different things happen in this take hit function depending on which one it is. So the brazier is going to make sparks appear whereas the projectile is going to get deleted and then make a different type of particle effect to happen. So this is when I hit a brazier, and then when I hit a projectile, you can see that I get different sparks that appear. Now we just need to plug it up in Unity after we have saved our script. The first thing we need to do is call that attack function. So the way we do that is we go to our player, we're gonna go to our mushroom attack animation, and at the last frame, we're gonna click this little button right here. This says add event. Then we're gonna select this little white event that gets added atop of our timeline. And then we are gonna select this drop down, and we can select any public function in our player's object. And the reason that, that it is looking at this object in particular is because that is the object where the animator is located. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my attack event from this list. Now that we have assigned our event, the next step is to go to our player and make sure we attach our thrust attack script to it. Set our damage to something above zero. Set our attack point to be our attack point transform that you made. Once you plug that in, you will see this white circle. And then we set our range to whatever value we want it to be. You'll see that the circle will grow or shrink depending on that. Then we just select whatever layers we want to interact with. And now it's set up. That's all the setup we have to do. So I'm gonna hit play and we can see it in action. When I go to attack one of the projectiles, you'll see that the projectile explodes. If I attack the brazier, we'll see the sparks fly from the brazier. I hope you found this video interesting. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons, comment below if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next one.